thanks for coming uh, to my presentation and choosing it over the other interesting sessions. Um, so my name is uh, Georgi Jakov and uh, I'm doing some kernel development work uh, for Qualcomm. And the title of this talk is uh, Scaling QoS. So I'll be speaking about on-chip interconnects. Uh, the purpose of this talk is to give an overview what on-chip interconnects are and to highlight some of the current and upcoming work uh, in this area, which is mostly about providing a mechanism for controlling these interconnects from the Linux kernel uh, and make use of the benefits they provide. So, here is the agenda. So, I'll say a few words about the challenges of the SOC architecture. Uh, we'll talk about the history and the evolution of the interconnects and explain a bit what network on chip is. So, then I'll give an overview um, um, of the problem we are trying to solve, uh, which is basically at the scaling support to the Linux kernel. Um, so I'll speak about the requirements and I will point out some of the frameworks which are related to this problem and just do a brain dump and explain how I see this and what the frameworks are, what can be expanded, and how can we resolve this. Uh, by the way, there will be a separate uh, hacking session in the afternoon, right after lunch, so if you are interested in this topic or um, you are an SOC vendor and you use some uh, custom implementation in the in your kernels to do some dynamic clock and voltage scaling or interconnect scaling you're welcome to join the hacking session which will be in uh, room madrid so during the last seven or eight years, uh, the on-chip interconnects and especially the network on-chip uh, concept is becoming increasingly popular. It's used in various uh, high-performance SOCs and it solves some uh, problems and provides some benefits. So these are mostly related to scalability, power management, performance management, predictability, QoS. So, yeah, there is high demand of integrating more and more features each year. There is a never ending race of adding new functionalities, IP cores, and uh, as a consequence of that, uh, the design of the SOCs is becoming more and more complex. So now we have multiple CPUs, dedicated GPUs, video encoders, decoders, graphic cores, modems, many peripherals and many components that are talking to each other. 
So the users want high speeds, fast transfers, great user experience, and, and the vendors are trying to solve this. So when we have a complex SOC, um, there are multiple sources of traffic, multiple IP cores, and multiple interrupts each second. And we have uh, shared components like DRAM, which is accessed from various components. So we have uh, utilization of DRAM, and usually we can't predict how, how the, if the SOC will handle this. So the predictability is difficult. Uh, also, the vendors are trying to, the SOC manufacturers are trying to reduce the footprint of the SOC and, and are facing uh, various challenges related to this because, of course, all manufacturers want to um, use low power in their SOCs and this is a challenging task. Um, so the communication becomes a problem in, in a complex SOC. So the wires are carrying the, are carrying the information and the components connect to each other. Um, the data is exchanged increasingly at increasingly high speeds. So in the beginning, designers, uh, chip designers has been relying on uh, some legacy interconnect uh, technologies like buses and crossbars. So in the bus technology, the interconnect is just wires. We have uh, um, some IP cores which are connected on the bus and we have an arbiter which is arbitrating access on the bus. We can't have uh, multiple devices communicating at the same time. Uh, and uh, also there are some latency constraints. Uh, if uh, uh, the area is larger, then uh, it's difficult uh, for the information to reach uh, within a single uh, clock cycle um, to the other components. So um, to resolve this, um, uh, the manufacturers are uh, using some hierarchical buses and uh, also crossbars. Um, so the crossbar is uh, um, a component which is uh, connecting all the inputs to all the outputs. So I'll just uh, show you how it looks like. Yeah, here is the bus. We have uh, devices on the bus. Here is the crossbar. As you can see, um, when we have a crossbar, we have. Uh, we have uh, multiple wires, so the area is much bigger when we use crossbar, crossbar but from a performance point, uh, uh, we can uh, have uh, parallel communication, so. So yeah, uh, and when we have a large number of wires, this uh, uh, can be a problem uh, uh, with the area on the SOC. Uh, when we have multiple wires, this uh, uh, creates uh, routing congestion and also increases power consumption. Here is uh, also an example point-to-point -point buses. When we increase the components, 
the number of wars also increases quadratically. So again, uh, this is ideal for performance, but not for area and uh, and power consumption. So here is how the network on chip concept uh, looks like. So um, actually this uh, concept comes from the carrier uh, networks um, and we have this for a long time and the idea is here is to reuse the carrier networks concept into the uh, SOC domain, in the embedded domain. Um, so here we have, um, um, here are our components, IP cores. Um, they are connected to our network through sockets, um, which um, give us uh, kind of uniform interface uh, to connect into the network. Um, we have some uh, routing or switching elements, uh, which are basically some micro routers um, uh, that are switching packets. So the communication here is uh, packet based. We have uh, um, a packet and each packet contains a header and a payload. And in the payload, um, um, we have some uh, information about source and destination uh, ports on the network and uh, some flags which can indicate priority so uh, we can do uh, quality of service. Um, so the links are very, um, um, very short and uh, we can have this network uh, sp uh, it can be uh, multi-tiered and it can uh, pass across uh, multiple power domains so in a SOC we can turn uh, some uh, parts off in order to save power um, so there are uh, various topologies. For example, this is uh, just a two-dimensional illustration. Uh, but uh, so this is a mesh uh, network. Uh, but it can be also a torus when we have uh, wrapping connections here. Um, so. Um, Compared with the um, crossbar, um, we have uh, fewer wires uh, because we can re reuse uh, these links. These links are shared between uh, between the ports, so we can have uh, some traffic from here to there, and there are also uh, multiple paths which can be used. Um, the network on chip hardware can uh, do some load balancing, uh, can provide uh, quality of service, uh, handle different kinds of traffic uh, with different priority. So, these are, this is the summary of the benefits. Um, this concept is scalable um, because we can keep the, uh, the number of the links is not increasing uh, quadratically like uh, with the crossbar architecture. We have a packet communication. And um, we use shared resources.
So there are different algorithms used for uh, quality of service and load balancing. And uh, there are uh, actually many companies providing some interconnect uh, uh, IP solutions like Arteri, Sonics, NetSpeed systems. Um, most, of, most of the companies probably are using some uh, ARM reference designs and other companies have developed their own uh, IP core solutions for the network on chip. Um, There is something else also that uh, when you create the design of the network on chip, um, um, you can know in advance uh, what performance can you expect. Actually, this can be calculated and each of the links between the nodes can run at different uh, frequency and provide different uh, bandwidth. So this can be um, defined at design time. So how about network on chips and Linux? So yeah, we want to control this network on chip and scale it and control it and use the power management benefits and do precise calculation what bandwidth is traversing the network. Seems that currently there is no solution for this in the mainline kernel. Uh, and probably the SOC manufacturers uh, have their own solution for this. So So if you know about any out of three implementations, the hacking session after lunch, you're welcome. I will be curious to know more about this and in the Linaro spirit, we can collaborate and find the common solution for, for all vendors which use this on the ARM architecture. So how to solve this and how does this fit into the Linux kernel? So I'll give you just an overview of the uh, Linux kernel frameworks that I think are related to this and uh, talk a bit of how I see this. Here is an example use case. If we have a device connected somewhere on the topology and it wants to reach some other device connected to this topology and, and the other device may be connected over a few interconnected knocks. So how can we describe this and how can we solve this? Uh, and this includes traversing all the networks, finding all the ports uh, where the traffic goes and um, on one of the ports we can have uh, multiple streams of traffic so we need to aggregate all this traffic um, and set some QoS values. So So we need some bandwidth uh, analysis. So here is an example of this topology. We can have uh, multiple network on chip uh, buses. For example, we have here a memory front end. We can have system knock, config knock, 
multimedia NOC, you can have many others depending on the architecture. So on each bus we can have multiple slave and master devices from a bus perspective. So uh, and uh, between each uh, network on chip we can have multiple connections. So in one scenario we, we would like to use one of these uh, links. For some other scenario we would like to use some other. So it can get very complicated. So here is an example if you want to find the path between one of the CPU to another CPU. For example, in this example here, we have two CPUs talking to each other via, by using a message RAM. So if one of the CPU uh, has to write something into the message RAM, it has to cross all these ports. So in order to do this, um, we should know the endpoints and we should know more about the architecture of this network on chip. So we need to divide, to define some kind of API for, for this. So here is a list of what we need to solve this. We need a description of the topology, how all these buses are interconnected. And the topology description, I see um, two possible solutions for this. One is to define this into the device tree and the other is to embed this into some uh, vendor specific driver and um, have this embedded into the uh, source code. And actually this is um, um, very similar to the common clock framework with the difference that uh, in the common clock framework we have a tree topology with uh, parent-child relationships and uh, here we can have also multiple links between the network on chips, so uh, the topology is uh, a little bit complex, so it looks like a graph. And in the Linux kernel, uh, there is no framework uh, supporting this. Actually, there is uh, the media device uh, framework which uses some graph traversals for um, configuring the video pipeline. So this was, this was the closest thing I found uh, related to this. Um, so we need also an API for setting the constraints on all the devices. We need uh, uh, to have information about uh, uh, which is based on source and destination pair. So then the framework can calculate what are the ports, what are the ports and uh, configure them accordingly. The framework should walk all the, the, the graphs and update the constraints on each port or node. So the knock hardware is also very specific. There are multiple IP cores from multiple vendors and many SOCs have their own, they, their own hardware. So, uh, so this uh, will be a hardware specific driver. Um, 
Um, also, we'll need a trigger uh, for updating this uh, network of nodes when there is a change of, uh, of the requirement or we want to, uh, to enter some high performance mode. We need to uh, traverse the tree and uh, set new QoS values into the hardware registers and uh, configure the, har the hardware for the performance node, or you may want the low power mode. And uh, this is uh, separate for each uh, combination of source and destination. So we need a trigger to update this. Uh, we can do this uh, probably with a specific API function or um, I'll talk a bit later, later about uh, what else can be used. So here is an overview of the existing frameworks in the Linux. Uh, so we have the driver model, the driver model um, contains some uh, information about uh, uh, parent-child relationships between devices. Um, but to model this topology, uh, we need something, uh, something different which contains, uh, uh, we can have multiple dependency, we can have uh, multiple suppliers and multiple consumers of each device. So uh, currently, there is um, a, patch, a patch set on the Linux kernel mailing list by the PN Core maintainer, uh, which is adding support for functional dependencies, uh, which is basically adding uh, some link uh, information into the uh, struct device, and then we can define there what are the relationships between devices and how they depend on each other. So this is um, an interesting patch set that um, um, probably can be useful in resolving this. Also we have uh, device tree. Um, so in the device tree we can describe uh, uh, the resources uh, which a device can claim. So here I see uh, the interconnects as a resource. We can model them as a resource and each device can uh, claim the path or a link to some other device and uh, set some um, properties on this link like bandwidth, latency, QoS. So we have um, multiple frameworks which are using the consumer provider based APIs like the regulator framework, the clock framework. So we can expose this uh, uh, links in the device tree and they can be claimed by, by some consumer driver. And we have a lot of uh, power management frameworks which uh, are mostly idle based. So probably we can extend them and uh, make them active based. So uh, explain a little bit more about this later. So we have some dev freak, OPPs, I've seen uh, some uh, some vendors use this into their downstream kernels, so this is also an option. When we have uh, an interconnect device, it can be modeled as a DevFreak device, which sets OPPs on themself, themselves. Yeah, so more existing frameworks. So we have runtime PM, which is currently mostly idle based, which does some 
reference counting and which when a device is not in use, uh, uh, it just triggers some idle states. We have uh, generic PM domains which are used for grouping devices that share uh, similar characteristics. And we have PMQOS which is very interesting. So PMQOS is um, actually a framework which uh, there are um, two APIs, one is uh, system-wide PMQOS and the other is per device PMQOS. So the device PMQOS is used to set constraints on uh, some of the devices. So um, this definitely is interesting in our case. So yeah, I already gave a quick overview. So this is used in many kernel subsystems. Um, so here, I think uh, we need this um, two callbacks as a minimum for um, setting some constraints. We need uh, an init callback for configuring uh, the network on, on chip uh, ports and we need an update API for updating and setting, setting new constraints so the consumers uh, can use uh, get and put functions uh, So here is an example of how I see this in a device tree. We can describe the interconnects between devices. Uh, for example, this is, if we call this a performance provider because actually the interconnects are uh, providing uh, connectivity and this connectivity can have uh, uh, different, different, different performance characteristics and we can request different, different performance levels. So if we have uh, something like this and call this a performance provider, it can have a compatible string which is some vendor specific driver. Uh, it, can, it has a performance cells, so this is also specific. And we can have uh, consumer devices. Uh, the consumer device can be any peripheral, for example, USB device, EMMC controller, even serial port, whatever. So this is just a proposal how I see this. We can describe here um, where this device is connected. So the performance provider on the previous slide uh, registers its ports uh, into the framework and each device describes where exactly it is connected on the topology. And here we define the links. For example, this device has connection to USB or to display and these here are the P handles to other device nodes so we parse uh, this into the framework and uh, look up and see uh, what the other endpoint is and where it is connected. So uh, here we can add some vendor specific uh, properties like metrics or directions or this is entirely dependent on the hardware. So the per device PMQOS is very interesting. So it exists already in the kernel and uh, it's just a database for storing uh, constraints per each device. So here the missing piece is uh, that we need to store the constraints uh, based on the source and destination device pair. So currently it stores only uh, constraints based on a single device. 
so we can extend this and um, the, dev the per device PMQ OS also supports um, it can aggregate all the constraints uh, which are defined um, per specific device and it can uh, provide uh, some value based on minimum or maximum uh, constraints value so we can just do a look, look up and uh, see what the constraints are. The runtime PM, say, so as I said earlier, it's idle-based and currently the trigger is uh, runtime PM put and uh, when uh, device is not in use, it just enters idle and the device can have an idle function and it's called and just does what, what it has to do for the specific hardware to enter idle, or idle mode. So I think that we may use runtime P PM get to trigger uh, an update uh, when we uh, want to update the interconnect performance. So this will be like a mirror what we have for idle. We can use the same concept and do this for performance states. So the generic PM domains concept is also interesting. So it allows grouping of multiple devices. So currently it's used for hardware power domains. So on a SOC we can have multiple power domains. We can switch some of them off when they are not in use in order to save power. So when we have um, network on chip and we have devices on this network on chip, uh, we have uh, devices which share this similar characteristic. So uh, this is a candidate for uh, for for something that we can use. Uh, the PM domains also support governors, so we can uh, use these governors uh, when we have multiple devices. Uh, the governors can just look at what devices we have and check what, what the constraints of these devices are and make a decision um, depending on the, on the devices and set performance or so what's the solution? <laughs> so the solution So this, I see this as a, some performance framework. We can call it performance framework or interconnect framework. Um, it's consumer provider based. So we are describing the, the performance providers in the device tree and the consumers. We use the, uh, the vendor drivers for describing the topology. Um, the consumers claim the links as resources and we extend PMQOS uh, to store the constraints based on, on links. For triggers, uh, we can use runtime PM get or use the specific uh, API function for triggering uh, update. So the idea here is to give an introduction of this topic and see if uh, there are other people interested in this and work um, for some common solution. Uh, actually this uh, problem is uh, standing for a long time and have not been resolved yet and the things were getting more and more complex so uh, it's time to do something and address these issues.
So there is a lot of work ongoing in this and a lot of upcoming work. So we're investigating this functional dependencies between devices part, part set by Raphael, uh, how this will work for buses. Because this is already a proposal, so we need to look into this and see how can we reuse this or do we need something else? So uh, I already mentioned that these frameworks need to be expanded. For example, um, for the PM domains, um, currently they support only one device, but actually a, de a device can be in more than one power domain and this is uh, not yet supported. Actually, I have noticed the last week some patches for adding uh, support for multiple power domains, so we're moving into this direction. Um, so at, at ELC, there will be a both session about uh, Linux device performance framework, which is uh, very similar to what we are trying to do. Um, so if, if you are at ELC, you can attend this session. Uh, Mike Turquette and Kevin Hillman from Bay Libre will be there and will be discussing this. So and yeah, there will be a session after lunch, so please join. So I would like to thank uh, the guys from Qualcomm, uh, Saravana Kanan, Sean Sweeney for providing some initial feedback and actively participating into these discussions and also Mike and Kevin from Bay Libre. So yeah, we're, we had some discussions about this architecture and I think we're, it's time to involve more people from the community and other vendors. So yeah, we can work towards a common solution for this. So do you have any questions or answers or comments? So in, in, in the examples in the slides, you showed uh, some bindings for the performance providers and consumers. Yep. Are they public, are they being discussed or? No, they're not being discussed I think, yet. Yeah. I, think the, I think we should probably uh, post the bindings and talk to more people. Yeah, agree. I think it's not just Qualcomm. I think that a lot of people would be interested to give more inputs on that. Um, yeah. Yeah, for sure. So this is actually the next step. So uh, currently I have some uh, work in progress stuff, which is using what I have described here. And I would like to hear some feedback and some X, next and people saying, no, you're crazy, you don't do this, or yeah, okay, sounds reasonable, or That, that, that first we uh, agree on bindings and the way things are supposed to work and then invest time on developing that rather than actually doing other way around. Yeah, agree. If you can pass the mic. I'm not sure uh, I agree that we necessarily need to serialize those two things. Uh, binding is just to get the topology information. Yeah. That's a small part of the picture. I think a bigger part of the picture is trying to get the APIs uh, agreed upon on the client side APIs and how we want to have the topology traversed and the constraints applied. I think all of these things can go in parallel and this is just one example he proposed in DT. I don't think we should say, hey, let's solve that first before we go to the coding part. Yeah. I think that's going to drag it on even further than it already has been.
by looking at the examples, I can see there are potential issues. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> I'm, I'm not at all questioning that the DT is far from being done. It definitely needs to be discussed. So, yeah, the basic use cases, I think, uh, are not very tightly addressed in the binding. So that, that, that's the kind of suspicion I want to bring up uh, when we expose the bindings to people. Yeah. Agree? Yeah, so session. Um, if other vendors can attend the discussion after lunch, that'll be helpful. I think for Georgie to at least get an idea of uh, different use cases other vendors might have for this, um, so that you know he can design for it ahead of time instead of being uh, brought up when he submits the code saying, hey, this doesn't work for me. So that could kind of save us all some time. This is not my area, uh, but it's interesting. I just have some fundamental questions, right? So um, I, I just have some fundamental questions, which is um, this sounds very complex, clearly. Um, firstly, is there some kind of a requirement to have a particular kind of platform as a proving ground for this? Or can existing problems on conventional mobile systems act as a proxy for a network on chip? Yes, yeah, so currently um, I'm using a Qualcomm platform to create some proof of concept and uh, make this work and uh, see how we can make all the frameworks work together and uh, scale these interconnects. I suppose what I was getting at was from a community adoption standpoint, do you have the classic problem or don't you of uh, there needs to be an openly accessible implementation of a platform on which this can be kind of aligned on, right? Does such a thing exist? Um, what, what kind of thing? Oh, a uh, network on chip implementation. That's yeah, yeah. Okay. Fine. This framework key is equally uh, equally applicable <coughs> for. Uh, system <coughs> with as a crossbar or doesn't even have a crossbar point to point, right? They're all perfectly valid hardware combinations where they should and could work. Okay. Yeah, um, so, so that was and network on a chip is not okay. a new thing. So you can d take a off the shelf. Um, exactly. Any any s s SOC or okay. platform that has a bus, which I'm sure all of them do. Okay. You can use this the other thing I meant to ask was um, like I got the impression, I have no knowledge of network on chips, but I got the impression that there's a certain amount of repurposing of established uh, techniques for network communication and protocols and stuff like that, right? So is that something you guys actually need to use here or no. not at all? Okay. So the packeti packetization of communication, okay, that's all happening. Right? That's one of the concepts we have. That's why I'm using concept to use something like that. Right. So what I meant was like, that's under the hood, right? The, the, that's an implementation specific yeah. packetization yeah. story. Yeah. And you're just talking about high level APIs to facilitate. Yes. Thing. Yeah. Okay. yeah, there are many vendors and ven many IP cores which are doing okay. their Do own Do you have a purpose. requirement to have like a central arbiter that is, you mentioned that there's some kind of a trigger that tells you that there's a situational change which might impact QoS, right? So who orchestrates that? Or who's in charge of? Yeah. But that framework is running on the AP? What if there's a non-AP entity that is also requiring a dynamic cost change? So I think it's, it's kind of just the reason. Okay. Right. Some random input code could be <coughs> okay, all the problems, they could be shot down and then everything else could be fixed. So that can happen there. Okay. And then the app, and depending on the vendor presentation, the app uh, or the application talking to us uh, consent could be part of the solution to that situation, right? Oh, yeah, fine. So, so yeah. which which so hints, sure, right. Which hints at um, some other kind of um, orchestration API, but that's that's an implementation detail. Yes. Fine, interesting. Yeah. Cool. Best of luck. <laughs> Have you thought about uh, creating a new framework? I'm all up for uh, reusing the existing framework, but from what I see, you're making core changes to a lot of frameworks, PM domains, runtime PM, and all that. 
I'm afraid that you might end up with a Frankenstein solution in the end. And yes. it, might be, it might be better to even look at a new framework because it does touch a lot of existing stuff, but not all the existing stuff provide the things that you need. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, what I did actually is creating a new framework. But as there are some existing ones, so actually the philosophy of the Linux kernel is if you have some existing framework, you try to extend it as much as possible and... I agree, but the changes that you are suggesting to runtime PM and uh, domains, they are core changes. Yeah. Like the assumption that a device exists in a domain is core. It cannot exist in multiple domains, or at least it's not being thought of that way. Yeah. So there are a whole lot of systems that believe that devices exist in a single domain. Yeah. And so you might end up conflicting a lot of existing ideas too. Yeah, I agree. That's so why I would say keep your mind open about reinventing, coming up with something uh, new rather than just using a... Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what makes it so complex. So. <laughs> I agree. I, I guess the benefits of a new framework needs to be put down to say, yes, if you make changes to all these frameworks and you end up with the solution, the kernel might look. Yeah, we can. Con yeah, we'll continue with the with the hacking session. Yeah, so it's uh, after lunch in room Madrid. So yeah, you're welcome. Thanks everyone.